so as you may already know, I'm uh, up in the north, and that means potential new lockdown measures. Of course, I'm not really 100% sure what my area falls or classifies under, but there are a lot of different areas that are under a lot of very different rules. Some, if you're in a Labour voting area, you've uh, definitely been hit the hardest. However, if you voted in a new Conservative member, then you've got the lightest restrictions, even though your numbers are just as high as those in those areas that have received the most severe lockdown. Also, we've just learned this morning as well that Boris decided to ignore uh, our scientists and the SAGE, uh, which is the, the government scientific advisory body, which advised the government, which said that you needed a... There we go. It said that you needed a a, a a short period of lockdown to be able to put a, a, literally a circuit breaker and a slow down on this. However, Boris refused to do this, and this was about three weeks ago. And now, what are we seeing? Huge, huge, huge numbers in the north. And now we're, we've got this bizarre de new system. And it's, it's just... It, Trying to dis describe our, our government's response to this has just been absolutely, truly, utterly shambolic. It really, really has. Um, but there you go. That's, um, that's, I suppose, what happens when you elect a guy who, who likes to give big fanciful speeches but doesn't actually like to deliver on policy. And this is, this is where we are. So we're going to go through a really good interview here. Uh, that you may know, well, not a guy called Femi Otwal. I know some of you may or may not like him, but to be honest, this interview is pretty damn good. He did an interview with a heart with a Harvard epidemiologist professor to basically ask why are we getting it so wrong? Just why is this happening? Why is all this just careening out of just seemingly just getting worse? Weren't we past this? And it's very obvious now that we are definitely, definitely headed on the crest of a of a, uh, of a a second wave of COVID. And it's just not going to be good because second waves are very often a lot, a lot worse than the first one. So, uh, this article comes from The Independent. It was uh, by Femi Otwal. And it's, I spoke to the Harvard epidemiology professor who explained why we are getting it so wrong. I hate to have to write this article. I hate that we're seeing COVID-19 cases rising exponentially. I hate that people are losing their jobs. I hate that lockdown restrictions are keeping people apart when they felt crushingly lonely, lonely all this year. I'm just the Brexit guy. I'm not a scientist, but I've kept in contact with several major epidemiologists to make sure that I know what I'm talking about uh, when I say that it's just not good enough. The government is bringing in a new traffic light system, three tiers of restrictions depending on the, on the severity of the outbreak, to replace and simplify the various regional lockdown rules. Good, but we wouldn't be here if the ministers had got the basics right. We know lockdown doesn't eliminate the virus or achieve herd immunity. The only purpose is to flatten the curve to protect the NHS and give us enough time to make our economy COVID secure so that when we open back up, this doesn't cause an immediate spike. Yet, for some reason, the national discussion is about whether things should be completely open or completely shut. We've gone back into the same all-or-nothing way of thinking that made Brexit a disastrous, disastrous decisions impossible. Bill Helgi is an, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Hagney, sorry, is an associate professor of epidemiology at the Harvard T.C. Can School of Public Health. He reached out to me to discuss the UK's handling of the pandemic and just how politics has infected the discussion of the coronavirus. He said, I wish we could get our head out of the idea of the pandemic, uh, uh, of the idea of pandemic management. It breaks my brain that at the moment we see a spike and the focus becomes, what should we shut down? Instead of, we clearly... Well, clearly, the stuff that's open needs more social distancing measures. The COVID-proofing the economy requires two things. Social distancing and an effective test and trace system. Professor Hegney spoke of wearing masks as a, key to, to, uh, as a key to part of this. So, can you tell me why mask wearing just hasn't been the default since June? It's a respiratory disease. 
why hasn't the government put adverts everywhere explaining why we need to cover those those uh, noses and mouths? Maybe then we'd have fewer people in supermarkets wearing them as neck warmers. The government should should be uh, drilling into people that masks are not about protecting yourself but protecting others from a disease you may never even know that you had. It's a failure to do so that means people are still walking around without masks but they think they're being brave rather than selfish. The government sent out thousands of letters to those with medical vulnerabilities telling them to shield at the start of the pandemic. So how hard would it be to send a mask ex exemption badge to anyone diagnosed with severe breathing difficulties and tell anyone else to require one from their GP? That is the easiest way you can strictly enforce mask wearing in indoor, uh, in indoor public spaces. The professor also spoke about using uh, ventures uh, venues that haven't opened yet like nightclubs to provide more socially distanced spaces for classes he criticized the lack of imagination in creating a socially distanced economy businesses are now complaining that the traffic light system will hit those that have covid proof their premises and where's the imagination for example restaurants could be graded on a three tiers tier one tables two meters apart tier two plastic partitioning between each table Tier 3 extractor fans. That way, when the infection rates rise, lockdown restrictions only hit businesses that don't make the grade. The eat out to help out money could have gone into fully COVID proofing restaurants instead of literally paying people to increase the, the infection rate. Then there's testing. The one thing that the World Health Organization told countries to prioritize test, test, test. It is not uh, just that the government has failed to devote sufficient resources to it, it's that the conversation around it has been so poor. Why isn't there a uniform level of, uh, of positive tests or case, or, or case rate per population that every area needs to stay below? Every area would, need, uh, would need then need to know exactly how close they are to lockdown and that they have to change their behaviour to protect jobs. We're sitting on the highest uh, excess death rate in Europe. If you compare the UK death rate in Germany, which locked down on time, one can say that the government strategy caused an extra 34,000 avoidable deaths. It doesn't help that it doesn't help that when Northern Italy was in lockdown on the 3rd of March, our prime minister was telling people that it was okay to shake hands with people. Our economy has been the hardest hit among the ODEC countries, and now we're entering a second wave, and the government seems to be playing epidemiology whack-a-mole more concerned with defending its actions and political advisers than saving the lives and livelihoods of people in the UK. Oh. And that's it. And yeah, I, I, I just completely agree. This entire thing has just been an absolute... Well, it's been an absolute disaster, really, from, from start to finish. And But this is, um, as we've said before, one of the reasons why the Tories have just been so bad at this is that they are thinking short term as far as they're concerned this virus was only meant to last six months and all their planning was just for that six months period it didn't even expect that it might have to extend some of this stuff the furlough scheme comes to an end at the end of this month this is going to make hundreds of thousands of people in this country unemployed because it's just uneconomical for businesses to bring back people back into full-time employment because Ricky Sunak, as we discussed um, earlier this week, has just made it completely uneconomical for them to do so. So, unfortunately, people are going to lose their jobs and we have already seen the highest level of unemployment. We are the hardest economically hit out of all countries. We are the, in a depression because of the COVID virus and now we've got a potential no-deal Brexit staring us in the face and our government just won't see sense in any of this. It is playing a very, very dangerous game and they know it. So with that said, please do like and share this video around. It does help out the channel. And if you're new, please do hit that subscribe button. We do talk a lot about British politics and Brexit a lot because, well, the two are interlinked. And trust me, Brexit ain't going away anytime soon, even beyond the end of the year. Trust me on that.
And of course, if you'd like to support the channel in another way, there are links to my Patreon and a one-off donation link should you like to support the channel in that way. And thank you to all the people that do support the channel in that way. And of course, with that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.